chapter 6, verse 11. Chapter 6, verse 11. Come on, I need you to get my bag. Okay, you got Kai on it? Okay. Praise God. If you're there, can I get an amen? If you're looking at the screen, can I say amen? Can I get an amen? amen. All right, here's a big test. If you have your personal Bibles, can I get an amen? amen. All right. Okay, that's, that's about right. <laughs> I would hope maybe it'll be the other way around, but it's all good. Amen. It reads this, But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. What are these things he's talking about fleeing? Of course, the works of the flesh. But just to put a little context in here, if you read the scriptures above that, He's talking about false teachers, teaching that gain is godliness. The, and he says in this, if you keep reading, for the love of money is the root of all evil. And he said they will fall into, they will fall into different temptations, being overcome by envy, strife, railings, evil, submersions, all kinds of wickedness of the flesh. He is saying, flee these things. Now it says this in 6, 6, 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Somebody say, fight the good fight of faith. Yeah. Lay hold on eternal life. Well, unto thou art called and hast professed the good profession before many witnesses. I give thee charge in the sight of God who quickens all things. And before Jesus Christ, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession, that thou keep this commandment. What commandment? The commandment of Christ. Without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, the title of this message is called Fight the Good Fight of Faith. Fight the Good Fight of Faith. You may put your Bibles down. We're going to pray and go to work in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, great God in heaven, we thank you for what we feel in this place already. God, I pray that you will speak to us. Anoint our ears to hear. Lord, I bind every distraction, every demonic hindrance, God, that may try to hinder what you have today. Satan, you are rebuked in the name of Jesus. God, your name will be glorified. Lord God, I pray you anoint our ears, our hearts, our minds. Take me, my body, my mouth, God. Lord God, possess me by your spirit, Lord, and use me to deliver the word in your way, in your fashion. Speak to us, God. Speak to us. And let us, your word said, he that has an ear, let him hear what the spirit is saying to the church. And we thank you for what you're about to do in Jesus' name. Come on, let's clap our hands before the Lord. You may be seated for a little while. Now, we live in a world full of satanic influences that is constantly attacking the faith of the saints and those that are trying, especially if you're trying to get close to God. I never thought I would see the day that we are living in come and be here so quickly. We see that abortions is at an all-time high. Marriages are constantly under attack. Divorces also are at an all-time high. Homosexuality is running rampant, trying to change the laws and infect our, the minds of our children and young people. There is division among us like we've never seen. When most of us supposed to, have the word of God as our source, many of us turn to the lying media and news organization, which sole purpose is to stir up division. 
I see witchcraft all over the place. On your streaming shows, uh, whatever, Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, the movies we watch, uh, the haunted shows. Some of us are uh, addicted to those things. Uh, witchcraft is all over the place. And must I hit this one right here and say the video games is full of the same thing. There's always something trying to manipulate the thoughts of the saints and those that are trying to get close to God. You see, this is war that we are in. An all-out war against the church, against the saints of God, and everyone who tries or desires to acknowledge God. We know the scripture, it says there's spiritual wickedness in high places, rulers in darkness, evil powers in principalities. Ephesians 6, 12 says, states that we are not wrestling with human flesh, but we are wrestling with invisible forces that cannot be seen. Can I testify right now? Praise God. The enemy is coming in our minds, in our hearts, making us mad, making us fearful, trying to get us to deny Christ in any kind of way. Sure, we will not deny him physically, but many of us may get caught into the tail spin of the enemy's influence and begin to deny God in the way we act and what we say and what we look at. I'm telling you church, it is time to fight the good fight of faith in these last days we are living in. You got to be prepared and ready to fight. Mm. Ooh, praise God. Forces that can't be seen with the human eyes. You can't touch this with your hands. Sometimes, in many cases, you can't hear this with your physical ears. But through prayer and seeking God through repentance, we can fight these things off. And I want to tell somebody, you can defeat it all through the blood of Jesus Christ and with the help and infilling of the Holy Ghost. I got to stay calm. Praise God. I'm excited in Jesus' name. So we need to be careful. Careful, church, not to fall in the traps of this world. The Bible says in 1 John 2 and 15, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. It says this, if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. We are people that shouldn't love the world. In other words, our love for God should be so strong, so passionate, that when anything in this world try to enter into our hearts, our mind, and anything, that we will cast it down and not even go, not even watch that, not even look at that, not even say that. There needs to be a strong love for God. God says, choose ye this day. Choose ye this day. Are you, did you choose to truly follow God today? Praise God. I want to tell you something. You can raise your hand and say, God, give me my heart and, and think that's it. That's not it. You can be baptized in the name of Jesus with the power of the Holy Ghost, filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. You will feel the power of God and you will feel like you can conquer the world. But many Christians that get the Holy Ghost, many of them begin to lapse, lapse on on their prayer life, laps on their reading life, and then the enemy comes in and begins to put shackles and chains around our neck, binding us to certain addiction, binding our eyes, binding our hands, and even binding our mouth. But I like what the scripture says, choose ye this day. Choose ye this day. It's a choice. Somebody got to get mad at the devil and say, I am tired of this thing infecting me. I'm ready to fight. I am tired of this thing controlling my eyes. I am ready to fight. I am tired of this thing destroying my family. I am ready to fight the good fight of faith. Woo! 
Bible says, be angry and sin not. Amen. Some of us get mad when somebody cut us off in the road. Some of us get mad when a boss tells you to stay late. But I must tell you, your anger is misguided. Your anger to that situation is a false anger. But what you need to get angry at is the sin in your life. You need to get angry at what the devil is doing and trying to bind you to. That's where our anger should come. Righteous anger. Righteous anger. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Our adversary is our flesh and also the devil. Romans 7, 18, for I know that in me, that is my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. What does that tell me right there? That if I'm not fighting, my flesh will rule my life. Because there's no good thing inside this flesh. So he said, they that are in the flesh, Romans 8 and 8, cannot please God. The flesh desires pleasures. The flesh desires laziness. The flesh lusts after the things of this world. The flesh envy these things. But I like what Galatians says in 5.16. He says, this I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill. Feel the lust of the flesh. And it says this in Galatians 5.24. They that are of Christ have crucified the flesh and the affections and lust thereof. When you get a strong relationship with God, man, you're going to want to let go of the world. Some people, you know, they, 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 they hate those preachers that say, stop doing this, stop doing that, don't do this, don't do that. I say, just tell people to love God more. Love God more. When you get a relationship in the secret place with God, God will begin to change you. Because it's not just because you want to be changed, it's because your love for God is so so strong that you have to take some things off. Your love for God is so strong that you have to change the way you talk. Your love for God is so strong that you have to change the places you go. And the only way you can get this love is you have to fight for it. You have to fight the good fight of faith. Woo! Fight for it. Hallelujah. Another adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. The Bible says he sinned from the beginning. It also says, for he is a liar and the father of it. The Bible also says the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Satan, I'm telling you, as much as God desires your soul, Satan desires your soul. Satan wants to send you and I straight to hell and when you try to get close to God watch out Satan will have you sitting there like a bump on the log you can come to church but Satan will say don't raise your hands don't you speak Satan will even tell you in the church these people are crazy but I want to tell you if you ignore that voice and you begin to stand up and raise your hands and lift up the name of Jesus it takes a fight it takes a fight and God will come and deliver you. Woo! I feel the Holy Ghost already in this place. Hallelujah. 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 But it, although it says in that same verse, the thief cometh not to steal, to kill, and destroy, it doesn't end there. If you keep reading in John 10, 10, it's, Jesus says himself, but I come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. The purpose of the Son of God was to die for our sins and that he might destroy the works of the devil and 
save our souls from a burning hell. It takes a fight. It takes a fight. It takes a fight getting up in the morning and saying, I got to pray. It takes a fight to say, I'm going to come to church when the doors are open. It takes a fight to say, I'm going to purposely read this Bible. It takes a fight. And that's why I love this scripture when it says, fight the good fight of faith. The devil is a liar. Praise God. Praise God. What is the definition of fighting? It means to engage in battle or in single combat attempting to defend oneself against or to subdue, defeat, or destroy an adversary. I felt like I can say that in my own voice better than that. Praise God. My own understanding. When you're fighting somebody, when you are into a fight, praise God. You got to prepare, but fighting is not about just punching or kicking or slicing. It's all about, also about defending and blocking and protecting. You defend one way, you strike the other way. Now, when I was writing this message, the, the, the concept of being a boxer came to my mind. And, uh, you know, boxing, I do not endorse it, but I do know about boxing. And I want to do a little illustration for you, praise God, to, to, to let you understand that when you look at boxing and the way they work, it is very similar to how we should work. Praise God. One of the things that I can say about a boxer that that we all can relate to is they are fighters. But what makes a boxer, and some of you are probably in here taking boxing, whatever, but what makes a boxer? Why would anyone want to get into the ring and get pounded, get beat down? I've never been a boxer, you know, because this is, this is what I'm saying is the main reason. But how could anybody want to get beat down, knocked down, spat upon, are yet even killed. Why would anyone want to do that? And I can tell you as I put a much thought into it, did a little homework on it, and it came down to this one thing why they would do it. It is because they love the sport. They love the sport. And as a boxer loves the sport, we need to have a love for the church. Very similar. Where we may get beat up, we may get hit, we may get knocked down, we may get persecuted, we may get rejected, we may get hated on, we may lose some family members, but it doesn't matter. I love this thing. I love this Christian life. I don't care if God doesn't do anything for me else, but I'm going to love him. I don't care what I lose. It's you got to have a love for God that no matter what the world throws at you, you will stand and fight when everybody's running. You will stand and fight when your family's running. You will stand and fight when all hell breaks loose. You got to have a love. I don't care if I die in this thing. I love being a Christian. And it's something I fight for. Amen, amen. And I got you. You. I got you on that. Some of you are saying, why would I do that to, to get beat up, to get beat down? Why would I sign up to, to all that? But hey, now the boxers also win too. And when they win, there's a lot of prizes. And I'm telling you, you are on the side that cannot lose. You are on the side that cannot lose. So if they knock me down, if my family runs away from me, whoever leaves me, God will replace them with a blessing, with more strength, with more endurance, and you can have the peace of God on you that surpasseth understanding in the storm. We need to have a love for the church and for the things of God so strong that we will stand when all things fail. Another thing you can relate to a boxer is a boxer is always ready to fight. Look now, you can't just pick a fight with anyone. You may, if you ever picked a fight with a boxer, you will regret it. For they are always ready 
to fight. And as Christians, we need to always be ready to fight. The Bible says you got to be instant in season and out of season. You don't leave your house without being ready to fight. Don't go to bed without being ready to fight. Don't just let your family do anything they want. Be ready to fight for your family because you got to have a fight of faith to win this battle. A boxer also trains. And y'all get where I'm going with this. Some of y'all can probably get up here and preach this better than I can. A boxer likes to train. They train their hands, their feet, their body, their heart, their eyes. They train everything that, of their body. And I say the same thing with us. If you're going to fight the good fight of faith, you better train your eyes, your hands, your feet, your mind, your heart, and your body to fight. Hebrews 12 and 2 says, look in, unto Jesus, the author and finisher of the our faith, training your eyes to stay on Jesus. Psalms 141 and 2 said, let my prayers be set before thee as an incense and the lifting of my hands as the evening sacrifice, meaning I'm going to teach my hands to be lifted up when I pray. To raise this means I surrender all. When you begin to lift up your hands, you're saying, I surrender all. I will teach my hands to pray. Praise God. Proverbs 4, 27 says, remove thy feet from evil. I'm going to teach my feet not to go to the evil places. Your feet shouldn't be going to the bar, shouldn't be running to cigarettes, shouldn't be running to alcohol, shouldn't be running to trouble. But I'm going to teach my feet to get to the house of the Lord. I'm going to teach my feet to get to my prayer room. I'm going to teach my feet to dance for the Lord and shout for the Lord. I'm going to teach my feet to not fall into sin. And we need to train in our feet that when we get to the house of the Lord, I'm always ready to shout. I'm always ready to leap. I'm always ready to jump because I don't know about you, but God has been too good to me. Woo! Hallelujah. The Bible says in Joshua 1 8, the book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. My mind, my mind must be focused on the word of God. We need to train our minds to be focused on the word of God. Proverbs 4 23, keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it comes the issues of life. Keep your heart protected. When your heart desires to go somewhere, that's when I got to get on my knees. We ought to get on our knees and begin to pray. If we know that the heart is desiring something Something that is not, that is contrary to godly standards. And I like this last one that I have on the body. Uh, Romans 12, 1, it says, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. My body is a living sacrifice. What that mean? That mean I don't always get what I want, but I want to do what God wants. That means I got to protect every ounce of my body, my hands, my feet, my eyes, my mouth, my heart, my mind. Present your body a living sacrifice unto the Lord. This is what we got to do daily. It's all about the training when it comes to the boxer. One of the things that I also like about the boxer is this thing that they do called shadow boxing. How many of y'all heard of shadow boxing? What it is is they, 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 they make believe an opponent and they begin to, to block and, 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 and duck and dive and and, and all that stuff and punch and uppercut and they and, and they, they imagine their opponent and they say I know the opponent's going to strike a, 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 a left hand and they begin to duck and, and say this is going to catch him and they be they begin to train and I'm telling somebody you better start shadow boxing the devil you better start training and you better start shadow boxing hey the devil got me to fail last time but I know I'm ready for him he's going to throw that hook and I'm going to hit him with the right he's 
speaking until I'm right. And I'm going to, you got to start shadow boxing the devil. What I mean by that, watch out. Watch out for the sin. Be anticipate the sin that may come in your life and begin to fight it. Sometimes you're going to have to wake up in the morning and say, God, I feel it. There's a spirit of lust on me. Get it off of me. I'm not leaving my house till the spirit of lust lead me. You shadow boxing because you already prepared. God, my mouth, I feel a little bit angry this morning. Hallelujah. God, help me control my mouth. You are shadow boxing right now. God, somebody cut me off the other day and I got angry. God, help me to not get angry. We got to shadow box the devil. Wherever you failed, wherever you messed up, it's time to shadow box that devil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. And when a boxer gets skilled, very skilled, the shadow boxing, it's time to get the gloves. It's time to get the gloves. Come on, bring them over here, son. Praise God. That's when you get the gloves. You done train. <laughs> Somebody said, uh oh. Yeah, you say, uh oh, for me. Because I may hit myself. I don't know how I'm going to carry the mic like this, but we're going to make it work. Pastor, I'm going to try it, but I may, I may need you here. Hey, strap me up, Pastor. He's like the coach. He's a coach. So, when you, okay, let, okay, hold on, let me see if I can, just, just pry it in there, Pastor, there you go. Just, okay, I don't know that, okay, let's not pry it in there, let's just, yeah, yeah. okay, there we go. Look no at creative. that. There we go. Nobody. Praise the Lord. Why, wow, that feels kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> Told you I'm about to punch myself. <laughs> All right. When the boxer is ready. He gets into the ring, and this is what it's like. He steps in the ring, and he, be, he shadow boxed everything, and he began to fight the opponent. And the opponent may get some hits on him. He may get some hits back on the opponent. And I tell you this, some of us, we, 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 we thought we had the devil figured out, but, but as we punch it, we don't know how to punch and, and, you know, you're, 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 you're trying to fight the devil, and, and, and you get knocked out. You get knocked out by, by cursing, slipping a curse word. Uh, you, 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 you get knocked out when you sit down and look at that thing that you shouldn't look at. And sometimes you, 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 you get knocked out out when the enemy comes in like a flood because you didn't pray like you should. You didn't do what you should. And he knocks you out. Oh my goodness. I feel like I'm boxing now. Praise God. Praise God. He knocks you out and he knocks you down. But I like what the scripture says. Don't laugh at me enemies. Though when I fall I will rise back up. Devil, you may knock me down, but I'm going to get back up and keep fighting. Though the righteous may fall seven times, he got to get back and keep on fighting. Keep on fighting. This is what it's about. It never stops. When you step outside, you're stepping into the ring, and it's always a fight. I got to fight. I got to fight. Some fights you can see. Some fights you can't see. The fights you can't see is that inner lust. God, I bind that spirit of lust. Get it out of me. And nobody's seen it yet. And you fight that lust and you, you knock it out. But you may be walking around and you may have a problem with the family member. My God, help me. Help me, Lord, to love that family member. Help me, Lord, to love that brother. You're fighting your flesh and you're fighting the devil. I'm telling you, you need to stop with these little jabs. Stop Stop with these little touches, but knock out the devil. Knock him out with the uppercut. Knock him out with the left hook, a right hook. Knock it out. What does that mean? Get the sin out of your life. Get the, some things you need to delete from your phone. Some people you need to stop hanging out with. You need to get it out of your life. Praise God. Praise God. And then sometimes in the boxing, and I'm not going off memory now, Pastor. Sometimes in the boxing, can you sit down right there for a second? You get to the ring, and you're tired, and that's when you need a coach. You need a coach to pump you up, 
Now, I want you to be like a coach now. Take that water and just dump it on my head, you know. And <laughs> <laughs> this is a youth valley. Then <laughs> pick me up and just say, get up and get up. Get up, get up there back and fight. You need a coach. You need a coach. You need a church. You need somebody that will tell you, get up and get back in the fight. Get up and get back in the fight. That's why the church is important. That's why being here is important. Because you need that coach to dump water on your head, to baptize you with love, and say, get up and get back in the fight. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do not stay knocked out. Get to the church. You got leaders here that will teach you, teach you how to swing spiritually. You got people here that will teach you how to dodge spiritually, to dodge the enemy. Oh, come on. Can, to, youth, can you testify with me? Am I talking to you, youth? Am I talking to you? Praise God. Learn how to dodge. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. The next thing, let me take out these gloves now. Praise God. Thank you for holding that. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. Praise God. Worked myself crazy. Praise God. Hallelujah. You got to be ready to fight. When you get out there in the world, you are stepping into the ring. You better ha know how to fight the good fight of faith. You better know how to get up when you fall. You better know how to say, God, forgive me for my sins and get back up and try again. I don't care how many times you mess up, how many times you can slip up 10 times in one day. Get yourself up. Get to the house of the Lord and continue to fight. Continue to fight the good fight of faith. Don't stay out of church. When you stay out of church, that's a TKO. When you don't pray, that's a TKO. I know it hurts. I know you're hurting right now. You messed up too many times over and over and over again. And now you don't even want to pray against it. The devil's trying to knock you out. But I got good news. You are in this place right now listening to this preacher say, get up and fight again. Get up and fight again. Get up and fight again. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Coaches in the boxing field was highly respected because they've been there, done that. They have the experience of spiritual warfare. They have the experience that they went through. And as a coach, when the bo a, a coach is training a boxer, he's been there already. And you can learn from the fighters in the church. I thank God for a church that has fighters. I thank God for a church that has people in there that know how to fight the good fight of faith. That when I am down, when I'm feeling weak, oh, all I need is a prayer and a courage and word. If the devil is firing me and I can't sleep, I get to the house of the Lord and God will move in a mighty way. Hallelujah. There was this one fight that I saw a long time ago and it was Mike Tyson versus Buster Douglas and nobody could beat Mike Tyson. Nobody could beat him. And he would one punch knock out people. And then there was a fight here. I'm just going to put on one glove. My goodness. Put on that left one. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Just strap me, strap me down, coach. Strap me down, coach. Yeah, get in the fight. Oh. Okay. No, no one said, everybody's anticipating Mike Tyson to destroy Buster Douglas, and rightfully so. He ran circles around him. Hit him once, hit him twice. One, two, step. Bam! Oh. Yo, this is a youth rally, so y'all can laugh all y'all want. Buster Douglas was down. But if you interview him, he said, I was down, and I felt like I didn't want to get up, but I made a commitment to my mother that I'm going to knock out Mike Tyson. You see, his mother died, and, and he couldn't see the fight. So that commitment, ugh. That commitment he had, I made a commitment. He got up and everyone was so shocked. 
They began to fight in the mess. The, 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 the fight was turned around just because he got back up. And in the long story short, Buster Douglas knocked out Mike Tyson to get the win. And I'm telling somebody right now, you got everything at stake. When you get knocked down, the devil wants to take your soul to hell. He wants you dead down for the count. You need to say in your heart, I know I messed up. I slipped up. I did it again. Oh, I, 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 I smoked it. I drank it. I put the drugs. I kept stop looking. I did it again. But you need to get every strength to say, I'm not going to go to hell. I'm not going to go to hell. I'm not going to go to hell. Get righteous anger and get up and get back in the fight. This is bigger than you. This is for your kids. For those those looking around you, those looking at you, you need to fight the good fight of faith. Hallelujah. Woo. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you. I'm going to need you to strap me up again. Praise God. Now, when a boxer gets super skilled and he knows that everybody knows him, he gets a robe. Help me put this thing on. He gets a robe. Okay, yeah. Ugh. So what is a robe used for? A lot of times. First of all, to, to hide the boxer's body. But there are some, some robes that are used with advertisement. They began to advertise. Okay, put me on this one. Right. They began to advertise what's going on. And when you get to a point and you are known as a fighter. It's like this. When you walk out of your house, this is what the devil sees. He doesn't see you, but he sees who's covering you. He sees who's covering you. You know what I'm talking about, sister? When you walk into the ring, Satan don't see you anymore. He sees something else. He sees the name behind you. He sees the name behind you. So when you walk in the room, you're going to see, he's not going to see you, but he's going to see that Jesus has your back. When you get anointed, when you get prayed up, and you're known as a father, Jesus has your back. Thank you, Pastor. Now, I don't want to distract you any much more. Praise God. But, but pastor, you're the real fighter. Might as well put that thing on. <laughs> don't y'all pastor's the real fighter. Come on now. Come on now. He is the real fighter in Jesus' name. <laughs> so when you get, when you fight and fight and fight, and you keep fighting, and you start conquering. The Bible says we're more than conquerors. What does that mean? We're conquering, and then conquering some more, and then conquering some more. This is how us Christians live our lives. We are constantly conquering. It says we are more than con conquerors through Christ. Amen. The Bible says in Philippians 4.13, one of my favorite verses, I can do all things through Christ that gives me strength, especially if you're battling something and you feel like it can't come off to you, uh, can't get off of you, you need to say, I can do all things through Christ that gives me strength. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can do it all. I can do it all. Hey, I'm a fighter. I'm ready to fight the enemy. When the doors are open, God needs some people to come in here. Don't care how the music sounds. Don't care what's, if the beat is not yours. They're ready to shout. They're ready to pray. They're ready to give Give God some praise because they're ready to fight the good fight of faith. If you need the Holy Ghost, you better be ready to fight for it and say, fight, I got to get the Holy Ghost today. You need to fight the good fight of faith. Put your faith on the word of God and believe in your heart. Today is the day that I will receive the Holy Ghost. If you're battling something, depression, fear, pain, you need to say, today I'm going to get blessed. Today I'm going to get strength because I'm going to fight the good 
fight of faith. I thank God for fighters in my life. I thank God for the pastors in my life, for the ministers in my life. When I felt like I couldn't get back up, when I felt like I was down, I get a call from a pastor, said I had a dream, and that dream strengthened me up. When I felt like I couldn't get out of the trap that I was in, I had some men of God pray for me, and I find extra strength in deliverance. If you need deliverance, we have fighters here in this church that can pray over you and the devils and whatever's challenge you can be gone if you need the Holy Ghost we have fighters here and coaches here that will help you and coach you through that you will receive the Holy Ghost in this place I thank God for pastors who fight I thank God for men of God who fight I thank God for saints of God who fight and you may not be up here with the mic you may be behind the scenes you know who you are you are a fighter. You pray every night. You know who you are. You read the word. You know who you are. You are a fighter and you are making an impact in this kingdom. We need to fight the good fight of faith. Let's stand. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I want everybody to bow their heads. Some of you are fighting the devil. Some of you are fighting the devil and you feel like it's a losing battle. So you came here to get deliverance. Deliverance is here for you. We have fighters here ready to fight for you. Some of you are having problems mental problems problems with your mind deliverance is here for you we have fighters ready to fight with you and for you and you can get deliverance some of us have problems truly believing God God can speak to you we have fighters here that will pray with you and help you some of you are bound to different substances whether it be something you smoke whether it be a needle, whether it be something you drink, and you're trying and you're trying, there's fighters here that will help you, pray for you, and you will gain strength. He did it for me. He will do it for you. And I want to hit some people here with this. This is what I believe God wants me to say. Some of you are not reading the Word of God like you should. Devil got you in some kind of ways. You think it's natural. You're not reading the Word of God, and then when you do read it, you get tired and bored. You need to be up here praying as well. Some of you have a hard time praying. You don't know how to pray. You pray so weakly, and you keep telling yourself in your heart, I need to pray more. I need to pray more. You say in your heart, I need to read the Bible more. But it, no matter how hard you try, it's like it's just, it's, the desire's not there. Desire is not there. And God wants to speak to you through prayer in his word. We have fighters here that are ready to help you fight. Coaches here that are ready to pick you up and help you to remain in this fight. I want to welcome this altar. If this message touched anybody, I want you to come up. We're going to pray for you. If you need the Holy Ghost of God, you need the power of the Holy Ghost, I want you to come up here with faith saying, I'm ready to fight for it. If you have sickness in your body and you want prayer, come on up. I'm making a call to anybody that has a need of God, needs something from the Lord. Whether it's by this message or you came here to receive the Holy Ghost, receive a healing, I welcome you to come to the front. Don't be shy. Don't be bashful. Cross the Red Sea. Oh, the Red Sea is open. Cross sit and make it to the other side.